was about to play six. He was going to do eight, but now he decided to do ten. Oh, baby! Yeah, that's it. Alright, Kimo is about to make the break. In the name of God, baby, do it! <laughs> Bring back headbutts! Watch your nose. You can do it! You're breaking bricks. What is that? We're, we're, we're just, you know, in this type of environment, you want to get the attention of the crowd and draw them towards you, you know. Got to be a little different than everybody else around here. And uh, I, got, I got a few skills people don't know about, like breaking bricks with my head. And uh, in the beginning of the sport, the beginning of the UFC, it was no rules. And one of my famous moves was the headbutt. Right. They took it away from me, and I wanted to show people what kind of damage I I still have with my head. All right, good deal. So, how are you? Because uh, obviously, all the stuff came out on the internet, you know, last month, and uh, you know, people are basically uh, having you left for dead. But uh, you, you look all right. Like, uh, like to say, a picture's worth how many words? A thousand words? How do I look? You judge for yourself. You know, how do I feel? I feel all right. I'm still a little injured, yeah. so I'm healing. You know what I'm saying? But I feel great. Other than that, and. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a step backwards to take three forward or so on, it's vice versa. And uh, it actually was a blessing to me. Everything that's, in fact, everything in my life that happened seemed to be negative at the time. Turned around and, and became just above and beyond positive for me. So everything's going great. Got a few things in the works that I don't really want to give up yet. Part of it's new eras. We're moving forward with new era and I got a few other things working out. So everything's awesome. So what was the reaction at the time from uh, people around you? They see you up on TMZ. There's there's pictures before and after. They're alleging that you're you know a junkie now. Um, so your friends, your your family, what's the reaction? You know, uh, a pastor once told me, your friends don't need an explanation. Your enemies, you can never convince them. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. How about your reaction? My reaction was. I really it's it's. No, no, I got a comment. That's my comment. I don't. I can't come up with a comment. I'm, it's like I'm still going through life, or it's still like ain't, ain't nothing over with me yet. So everything's still going. I, I don't have a reaction. You know, it's like fighting. When you get hit, you can roll with a punch. You know, or you can get knocked out. You can get up. And I'm a, I'm known for one of those fighters who gets knocked down and gets up harder than I do before I got knocked down. It's not like you haven't been down before. No, I've, uh, it ain't like I've been down before. This game, this sport, you got to get dirty. You know, blood is part of the sport. If you, don't, if you can't handle it, do something else in life. So where are you now in terms of your fighting career? My fighting career is tentatively, we got one more in this body. I'm trying to pull one more out. It's not about the win. It's not about the loss. It's just about getting out there and going through all the procedures of training hard, getting the cardio in doing all the right steps so that when I step up across my opponent, I can look at him like this. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and when I look at him like that, I mean it. Yeah. I don't want no questioning if I'm ready, if I do this. No, I want to be 100%. You know, I'm intrigued to hear your opinion because we heard some of it come out on the commissions, yes. right? And part of that goes into the promotions, backing fighters. Yes. How do you think it works right now? Before we get to the commission part of it, is it the job of the promotion to kind of back the fighters? Is there an unfair system right now? Because it seems like some guys are allowed to fight it. Other guys behind the scenes are told, you know what, be quiet. You don't have to fight it. There's so many loopholes that it's definitely a disadvantage. There's a lot of disadvantages. There's a lot of favoritism. And it's definitely monopolized right now. Uh, California is, is, is pretty, it's, 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 I don't want to use the word corrupt so much, but there's a lot of, what people don't understand uh, politics involved in it. There's certain people being tested. Hello. You know, everyone should be tested regardless. Everyone. You know, uh, in this sport, the commission, the, the governing bodies right now, 
the way that it's laid out as far as the laws and regulations, there's a lot of loopholes and space in between there for the politics to still have a lot of control. Uh, it's very unfair for the fighters, um, for up-and-coming promoters, for up-and-coming, you know, uh, organizations that don't have the funding or don't have, you know, the connections yet to come up. And, and so it's just, it's really unfair. What was your experience when you've had to go in front of a commission? Did you feel like you were talking to people who knew what they were dealing with or did you feel like you had no real defense? Yeah, I'm, I'm like one of the founders I'm, of the sport before it was even called MMA. I was involved into it, so I have an expertise, a knowledge about certain things that a lot of, uh, of the politicians and commissioners and all these people, they don't, really, they don't really have, and they don't have an open mind to hear it. They think they're, they, they, they know it all, so it's kind of sad because it is hindering the sport, and it does uh, affect, affect the game. Look at the game. It's leveled off. It's actually starting to get a little bit boring now. There seems to be a little inconsistency, too, in terms of the penalties they hand down. I was just at the Nevada hearing, and uh, you'll have one guy fined $2,000 for a painkiller a positive test. Carol Parisian just lost $32,000, and now it sounds like they may put in something new where if you get a win bonus and you win and you test positive, you may lose the win bonus. So, I mean, you, you could be talking about 70% penalties. Is that too harsh, or does that send a message and maybe guys, or, or is there, right now it's very confusing in, in what you're taking because sometimes you don't even know what you're taking. It's, it's so inconsistent. They don't have everything written down in black and white. Like I said, loopholes. You know, like what you said, certain people are getting harsher penalties than other people because there's no exact writing on certain things. They need to get straight on what, what you, you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. They need to give more time for uh, advance notice. They don't, they, a lot of these things are decided upon last minute which affects the card, affects, affects the fights. Um, it's just, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, there's too many inconsistencies right now. Yeah. Do you think they have interest in listening to you guys? No, I don't think they do because it's been, in, it's been here now for I don't know how many years. Nothing's changed. They may have changed the people in certain positions, but they still have the same policies. So they're not really listening to the public the fans, the fighters who, you know, we're putting, like I said, all of our life into this. There should be some kind of justice. So when you got popped, you got a part of the story was, hey, this guy wanted to, he made a statement that he wanted to be part of the commission. So how do you answer people now? I know you still have to go through the legal process, yeah. but, but how do you answer people now? It kind of made it into a big joke that, oh, yeah, Kimo wants to be part of the commission and give advice, and now look what he's doing. Who, who can trust him? Yeah. Uh, the people who uh, reported on, on that incident, uh, are more more gossip they're not real they don't they didn't base it on facts yeah. so I want to say that first of all it's all alleged none of it is factual none of it is factual and when when the, when I finally get my day in court the people are gonna be surprised to find out what really did happen and the, what was reported so tell us what's going on with the uh, new era and kind of your maybe your your second career, your next career after fighting, right? Because I'm a fighter, like I said, I've been around since the beginning. There's things that I feel sh could be done to improve the sport. One of, for first of all, there's no amateur, really an amateur organization out there, and so we're building a platform for by the fighters for the fighters, giving them a chance to come up, get experience, showcase their skills and get the exposure. Uh, in the beginning, UFC was based upon the fighters. You know, they would show little clips of the fighters so people can identify with the fighters. There's so many names out there now, people don't know who's who. Yeah. Here's a way of building that. So that's what we're about. All right, there you go. Chemo, not strung out, not, doesn't weigh 140 pounds, isn't sick. He looks pretty big to me, I don't know. You look relatively healthy, I'm except healthy. for the except for the bad wheel. I'm healthy, so you know, uh, I've been back in there training again. I know I'm limping around a little bit, but uh, we got one more shot. We're coming back out. Just keep yourself posted.